This material is made available to you by or on behalf of the University of Melbourne under Section 113P of the Copyright Act 1968. It may be subject to copyright. For more information, visit the University Copyright website. Good morning. So we know NMOS and PMOS uh, transistors. NMOS transistor is uh, made on a P substrate. And then when you apply a positive charge at the gate, what is happening is uh, you are getting a channel made of electrons here. That is the reason it's called NMOS. In the case of PMOS, you are connecting a negative voltage here. Then you are getting a channel made of holes in the N substrate. And then these are called NMOS and PMOS. And then when you combine the NMOS and the PMOS together, that is called the CMOS technology. So in the CMOS technology, usually what they do is, uh, if you check here, in the N, for NMOS, you need a P substrate. For PMOS, you need a N substrate. Then uh, when you want to fabricate the NMOS and the PMOS on a same substrate, then the question is which substrate you will take. Because for NMOS you need a P substrate, for PMOS you need N substrate. So how that is fabricated is they take a P substrate and then they, what they do is they dope it and heavily dope it and then they make a N well so that you are getting a N substrate. There you fabricate the structure so that you get a PMOS here and then for NMOS you don't have the problem with the P substrate. So when you combine both on a same substrate it is called CMOS technology, that is NMOS plus CMOS, complementary metal oxide semiconductor. And then why this uh, CMOS? We need actually both NMOS and PMOS for designing the circuits. There are some advantages. And there are also some designs using NMOS only, but then most widely used design is CMOS. Then the advantages you will see when we study current mirrors, differential amplifier, then you will understand why we need this uh, complementary circuit. In some ways, uh, they are advantage. So it is possible to grow an N well 
inside a P substrate. So that's what we have done. So this is uh, uh, possible by doping or they can grow it on the P substrate to create a technology where both NMOS and PMOS can coexist. It is known as CMOS or complementary MOS. So CMOS roadmap. So if you check at the CMOS roadmap, around 2000, the technology was, uh, you can see here, 130 nanometer, so 130, that's a too big, 130 nanometer. Or people said uh, 0 0.13 micrometer, which is equal to 130 nanometer process. The smallest transistor has a channel length around uh, 0.13 micrometer. So that is, that's what in, 2000, just after 2000, uh, if you check the process technology, the width of the width of the channel, that is the process technology, the width between drain and uh, source, that was around 130 nanometer. Then you can see it came down. Later in 2004, it became 90 nanometer technology, and then later it came down, and then in 2000, see, I got only up to 2016. In the 2016, actually, it is uh, 22 nanometer, around 22 nanometer. And uh, so this is a technology leadership is essential to meet cost, power, performance, quality, and time to market requirements of customers. So then uh, what it says is uh, you are reducing the size of the transistor, and uh, then you also have to meet the cost. It should be low cost, low power, high performing. There should be good quality. And then I have shown this one. Then the question is, why do we want to reduce the process technology? Obviously, you haven't studied you know, the reason. Why people are reducing the process technology? Like in 2000, they got 130 nanometer. Today, you got around 12 nanometer technology. Then people might ask, why do you want to reduce it, the channel width? Yeah, yeah, so you get more, more transistors in the given area. And not only more uh, given area, that's a good answer, given that we haven't studied further. Another reason is you can increase the speed. When your channel length is smaller, you can increase the speed. And then uh, when you try to increase the speed, then there is a problem. You should also keep your power requirement small. Because when you have a chip, you can't pump more power. Because what will happen is uh, if you pump more power to your chip, it can burn. So you have to reduce the power requirement. And the people in the industry, they don't like any design that is consuming more power. So in the industry, in the CMOS chip like IBM or Intel, they will say that we want to reduce the process technology, same time we want to reduce the power. So that is the design. So that, that, that type of design only is promoted. And then, so what will happen is uh, maybe it, now, now also the silicon is ruling the world, but the problem will happen when your channel length is uh, below maybe five nanometer, maybe three nanometer, and then what will happen is, uh, so what will happen? When your channel length is like, like two nanometer, or coming down to one nanometer, what will happen? Then you have only a couple of atoms separating your drain and source. That is a big issue. With silicon, at the moment, it is not possible. So that is the reason people are working on nanotechnology-based uh, technologies, where people have used uh, nanotubes or nano wires as a channel because that can carry current. There are other issues like leakage. There will be leakage current when you have very small thickness and then there is another issue. Maybe you haven't thought of it. When you have a small channel, then you can't pump much current because that will heat up and it will burn it. So that is the reason people are thinking of different schemes uh, to make a transistor. So that is the reason uh, people are working on nanoelectronics. In the nanoelectronics, people are coming up with the uh, idea of using transistors using nanotechnology. Some of the designs are people are used in nanotubes or nano wires. So the, what they will do is they got a drain, they got soles, then they put a nano wire or nano tube as the gate. Sorry, not as a gate, as a channel. So the channel they replace with the nanotube or nanowire. These are just you know, for information. Though people might ask then uh, what is the minimum size you can achieve? What are the challenges if you reduce the uh, process technology down to two nanometer or one nanometer? And then you know the reasons. And then these are some technologies. And then Moore's law. You all know Moore's law. So Intel co-founder Gordon Moore in 1965 had noticed that. Uh, 
number of transistors per square inch see number of transistors per square inch on integrated circuits had doubled every year since their invention so that's what gordon moore predicted in 1965 so if you check here uh, i don't know some noise see if you check here that is exactly following what gordon moore has predicted the number of transistors per square inch on integrated circuits has doubled every year since their invention see so the channel width, width is reducing so that is another way of looking at is uh, gordon moore said uh, this channel width for the process technology will become smaller and then your transistor uh, number has uh, doubled definitely doubled so that you can see that from 1960s and then 65 it is exactly following what uh, gordon moore predicted then so that is the reason in semiconductor there is a big question like we also do some research uh, uh, on submicron pixels and the submicron uh, uh, transistor development then the question that we ask is uh, when the process technology is reduced because in order to meet uh, moore's law now you know moore's law number of transistors per square inch should double every year the number is doubling like you are the semiconductor uh, process engineer then uh, you when you see it is doubling every year then your process technology is decreasing but then uh, it was okay now but then people started asking the questions like we we ask questions uh, whether moore's law will follow after 5 nanometer because up to here it is fine with the silicon whether moore's law will uh, follow after 5 nanometer technology because as i said after 5 nanometer technology what will happen is you are talking about uh, 3 nanometer 1 nanometer then you have only couple of atoms separating then can you double it again you know what i meant so there is a kind of a bottleneck is approaching and uh, uh, then i don't know the moore's law whether it will fluctuate i'm very curious to see because as per moore's law your your channel size should keep producing even 1 nanometer maybe below 1 nanometer otherwise at some stage you have to say that okay moore's law was valid from 1965 to maybe 2020 you know what i meant so then we are also curious to see whether moore's law will uh, uh, violate it but then intel i know that intel is working on some ibm intel they are working on some uh, other type of transistors which can actually go down to like 3 nanometer at the moment so they are developing so that intel ibm they want to you know keep the moore's law running so that is a moore's law that these are the challenges so we also do some work on uh, submicron uh, transistors and the cmos sensors because those are very important uh, uh, if you want to reduce the process technology further down and then why we need uh, process technology further down is uh, to take into account all the speed requirements processing requirements because of the internet of things lots of sensors you got enormous amount of data created and then you need faster processing so that is a, a main reason we want to reduce the process technology so please know that uh, please you know remember moore's law what moore's law says and then uh, number of transistors per square inch on integrated circuits uh, you know double every year so it's keep going then comparison of uh, bipolar and mos transistors bipolar transistor mos transistor so bipolar transistor got an exponential characteristics means your collector current is depending upon the uh, base emitter voltage emit base emitter voltage and then on an exponential exponential relationship so your ic equal to is in the exponential vb by vt quadratic characteristics your drain current is proportional to vg v you know vgs minus vth the whole square active when your collector base greater than zero saturation your vds should be greater than vgs minus vth here the saturation is vcb should be less than zero this is a triode region vds less than vgs minus vth i have just you know noted down the equations then finite base current zero gate current for most you don't have any gate current for bipolar transistor you got a base current for bipolar transistor you got early effect the equivalent in mos is channel length modulation here you got diffusion current here you got drift current then here you can use as a voltage dependent resistor if you are operating in the triode region bipolar transistor also can operate but they are not good in that region you don't get a good ohmic region in the characteristics that's the reason we put a uh, hyphen here so this is very good in uh, making a voltage dependent resistor so bipolar devices have a higher gm than mosfet for a given bias current due to its exponential iv characteristics definitely 
if you ask which one got a very high efficiency in converting the voltage into current, then you can write down ID, ID proportional to VGS minus VTH, the whole square. For bipolar transistor, IC equal to, IC proportional to exponential VB. Obviously, the exponential got a high, you know, high, efficient, high efficiency. So GM, transconductance in a BJT is much higher than MOS. So now we will find out some uh, uh, operating regions. Maybe it's a group work. So first we will take uh, NMOS. So in the NMOS we have got uh, regions, that is a triode region, VDS less than VGS minus VTH. Saturation, when your VDS is greater than VGS minus VTH, this is edge of saturation. And then here we get the pinch off, channel pinch off. And then for N channel MOSFET, the MOSFET is off when your VGS is less than threshold voltage. If VGS is greater than VT, then your MOSFET is on. But then if your VDS is less than or equal to VGS minus VT, it is in the triode region. If VGS is greater than VT, your MOS is on. And then if VDS is greater than VGS minus VTH, it is in the saturation region. Then VDS. So the meaning of VDS means VD minus VS. Voltage at drain minus voltage at source with respect to ground. VGS. Voltage at gate with respect to ground minus voltage at source with respect to ground. So suppose VTH equal to 0 0.4 volt, because for NMOS, threshold voltage is positive, which we know that we connect a positive voltage to the gate. If VTH is equal to 0 0.4 volt, this transistor, MOS transistor, this is in the active region or uh, edge of saturation, uh, sorry, not active region. When it comes to MOS, whether it is in the triode region or saturation region or at the edge of triode region. How about this one? So I have marked this is drain, source, gate. So this will be in, which one? Yeah, so definitely it is of VGS equal to, what is VGS? VG minus VS. So voltage at the gate, 0 0.5, minus voltage at the source, that is equal to zero. If your VGS equal to zero, which is, which is less than 0 0.4. So this is at off state. There is no point in looking at it. How about this one? So your VGS equal to VG minus VS, that is equal to one volt. Then definitely either it is in linear or saturation. Now which region it is operating? Yeah, so if it is in the saturation, your VDS should be greater than VGS minus VTH. So VDS, VD minus VS. So what is drain voltage? Two volt minus source, so 1.5. 1.5 greater than what is VGS? 1 minus 0.4. Definitely, you know, this is in the saturation. VGS minus VTH because 1.5 minus 0.5, that is a VGS. VGS means VG minus VS. 1.5 minus 0.5, that is 1 volt, which is greater than 0 0.4 volt. Then we have to check whether it is in the triad or saturation. So you can check here, see VDS, VD, 2 volt minus 0.5. That is equal to 1.5 volt. VGS minus VTH. VGS equal to 1 volt minus 0.4. So that is equal to 0.6. So 1.5 is greater than 0.6, definitely. So it is in the saturation region. So by looking at it, you can find out whether it is in the saturation, uh, saturation region or in the triode region, or at the edge of uh, triode region. How about this one? So it's in the triad region because VGS greater than VTH, but then VDS is greater than VGS minus VTH. So PMOS, we already learned the PMOS transistors. For the PMOS, for the NMOS, I have written the equation here. For the PMOS, to reduce the complexity, just take the magnitude. So you use the same equations, but only take the magnitude. See, here I put the magnitude of VT. Here I will put the magnitude of VT. Then it is easy to find out uh, uh, whether it is operating in the triode region or saturation region or edge of saturation. So here is VSG. So the PMOS, what you, what you have to carefully is this is VGS. And then uh, for PMOS, it will be VSG, VSG, VSD, VSG. So all these things will be reversed. And then we will only take the modulus. 
see that's the reason Vsg and then we take the modular same equations only this will be just reversed for nmos gs for pmos sg and then we take the modulus then uh, everything is fine so you don't have to worry about the sign of the threshold voltage because for pmos we will be connecting negative voltage here then we are getting here in the end substrate a channel made of holes and then for nmos i have given the nmos here and then you can compare see vgs less than vt vsg less than modulus of vt so here just put the modulus in the nmos then you are fine your answer will be correct so that you don't have to think about the sign of your threshold voltage because pmos the threshold voltage is uh, uh, negative for nmos it is positive because when you connect a positive charger to the gate you are getting a channel made of electrons here you are getting a channel made of holes because you are connecting a negative charge here for pmos just like a pnp transistor in bipolar technology it is possible to create a mos device where holes are dominant carriers that is a pmos which we already discussed it is called pmos transistor now what we are going to do is we are going to find out uh, the region of operation for pmos transistors it behaves like an nmos device with all the polarities reversed so that's what i have shown here so better to take the modulus so that you don't have the problem with the polarity so pmos so this is a pmos so why looking at you know pmos because for the pmos as in the case of pnp the arrow is going down because this is the direction of the current so threshold is minus 0.4 because you are connecting a negative voltage to the gate so this one whether it is in the cut off linear or saturation so it is cut off so cut off means you are saying vsg less than threshold of uh, uh, vt so threshold of uh, vth the magnitude is uh, vth is only 0.4 because we are going to take only the magnitude 0.4 then we have to find out vsg vsg equal to vs minus vg so what is vs this is a source vs minus vg that is equal to 1 volt so vs vsg is 1 volt and then 1 volt definitely greater than modulus of your 0.4 so it is not in the cutoff region then we can see linear region if it is linear region vsd should be less than vsg minus vth so with this vsg we already found out vs minus vg vs minus vg that is equal to 1 volt minus modulus of threshold that is equal to 0.4 so you are getting 0.6 here then we have to find out vsd vs minus vd how much is vsd here yeah 1.5 volt then 1.5 volt is less than 0.6 definitely in the saturation region because 1.5 is uh, you can find out vsd vs minus vd vs equal to 1.5 volt with respect to ground here it is zero so vsd equal to 1.5 and then uh, you can find out vsg minus vth vsg is vs minus vg that is equal to 1 volt minus modulus of modulus of vt 0.4 volt 0.6 so your 1.5 you see 1.5 is greater than 1 volt to minus 0.4 vsg minus modulus of vth so please take the modulus then you don't have to you know worry about the polarity how about this one linear because your vsg definitely greater than modulus of vth your vsd is actually small so i have got a couple of more examples maybe you can try at home so i have given the answer but you try these are simple uh, questions you can just you know substitute the values and then we can find out so now there is a question for you this is a simple amplifier configuration then we have to find out whether it is in the triode or saturation then uh, also you have to find out to uh, calculate the bias current of m1 mu n cox that is already given 100 microamps per v volt square and then threshold voltage is 0.4 volt definitely you can see the arrow is uh, out pointing out so this is nmos so threshold is positive 
if the gate voltage increases by 10 millivolt, so 1 volt plus 10 millivolt, what is the change in the drain voltage? So that also we have to find out. And then when you have this uh, circuit, it is uh, interesting, you got VGS, you can find out VGS, VG minus VS, that is equal to 1 volt. Then can you please tell me whether it is in the triode region or saturation region? I'll give you one minute. Yeah, so this is a circuit, and then we have got one volt here. Then we also got the threshold voltage. That is equal to 0 0.4 volt. So I can find out this is a gate, this is a source, this is a drain. And then I can find out VGS, which is equal to VG minus VS, which is equal to 1 volt. VTH, which is equal to 0 0.4 volt. So I can find out VGS minus VTH, which is equal to 0 0.6 volt. But then I had to find out VDS, because if VDS is uh, greater than VGS minus VTH, then I can say it's in the saturation region. If it is less than VGS minus VTH, then it's in the triode region. Then I want to find out VDS. So in order to find out VDS, I need VD minus VS. So VS is equal to zero. But then I, I had to find out VD. So what is the value of VD with respect to ground? Can you find out? So I can write down then VDD, which is equal to, so the, what is the current? This is ID. So ID RD, so this is RD value, plus VDS. That's what we needed. So VDS, which is equal to VD here, because VDS is VD, which is equal to VDD minus ID into RD. But then VDD is 1.8 volt, RD equal to 5 kilo ohm, but then how about ID? Oh, yeah, yeah, sorry. Yeah, how about this ID? Yeah, yeah, but then when you assume that, you are assuming that it's in the saturation region. Then, then you might be clever. So he said, uh, here we don't know. Then what we will do is we got two equations for ID. I will assume ID. ID equal to half mu n COX W by L, uh, you know, VGS minus VTH, the whole square. But then if I put this in, uh, my assumption is it's already in the saturation region. You know what I meant? Then if I use other equation, my assumption is already in the active region, sorry, triode region. So then in this situation, what we will do is, uh, we will assume that it is operating in one region. It is unclear a priori in which M1 operates. We don't know M1 operates in the, because we can't find out from the given parameters. So in that situation, what we will do is, let us assume M1 is saturated. So you can assume whether M1 is triode region or saturated. So here I am going to assume M1 is saturated and then proceed. Since VG is equal to 1 volt, what we will do is uh, we will use the equation. So our, we assume that it is in the saturation region. Then we will double, we will back, back calculate and check it. So ID equal to half in the mu and COX WYL VGS minus VTH. So in, this, in, in these type situations, if you don't know whether it is in the triode or saturation region, we will assume M1 is operating in the saturation or triode region. You can assume either of... Uh, both the situations. So here we assumed M1 is in the saturation region. So I can use this equation. Then, which is equal to half mu and COX is given. VGS we know already given 1 volt. And then VTH is 0 0.4 volt. Substitute you get 200 microamps. That is a drain current. Then we can find out what is X. VX, that is a VD. VDD minus ID into RD. Then you can substitute 
then you get a 1.8 minus, that is a 1.8 volt, 200 microamps into 5 kilo ohm, that is your RD, equal to 0 0.8 volt. So you got VD, 0 0.8 volt. Now you can check it, whether it is correct. So your VX, which is equal to VDS, which is equal to 0 0.8 volt, which is greater than VGS minus VTH, because VGS minus VTH is only coming 0 0.6 volt, your VDS is 0 0.8 volt, so your assumption is correct. If your assumption is not correct, this will not be valid. You know what I meant? If you assume here in the triode region, it will not be matched here when you calculate. So that's how we will be doing. So if you don't know the, oper uh, the region of operation, we assume whether it is in the triode or in the saturation, then we proceed and then we will check whether this is valid. So here it is valid. Now, now we found out it is in the saturation region. Now the question is, uh, if the gate voltage increased by 10 millivolt, what is the change in the drain current? How will you do it? So now the thing is we have to repeat the same because now VGS then means your one volt you are going to increase to 1.01 volt because it's a 10 millivolt. Means the, the what it is asking is now you have to find out how much change in the drain current. So here we have got one volt. So now what we have to find is, uh, I have increased this to 1 volt plus 10 millivolt at the input. So if that is the case, how, what is the change in the drain current? So when you find out that one, you can also find out the gain. M1 operates in saturation. If the gate voltage increases to 1.01 volt, means 1 volt plus 10 millivolt, ID equal to, you can substitute in the same equation, then your VGS is uh, 1.01 volts here. Then you get another uh, drain current, which is equal to 206.7 microns, because here your VGS is more. So instead of 200, you got 206.7 microns. Then, then also you can find out what is a VX. So VX equal to 0 0.766 volt. And uh, See, zero point because your v, now your drain current increased, so that, that's the reason your Vx slightly reduced, but still in the saturation region. Now, so your drain current, how much? What is the change in the drain current? 200 206.7 microamps minus 200 microamps is a very small current. How much is 6.7? That is the change. And then, now my question is, uh, what is the gain? What is the gain of the circuit? Voltage gain. So I got gain equal to 3.4. How do you think that is correct? How can I say this is 3.4? Yeah, so the, the, the gain is a change in the output voltage for a given change in the input. So gain here it is, uh, so when we say gain, so your Vx, when you have one volt Vgs, then what you are getting is your Vds, which is equal to Vx. How much is that one? 0 0.8 volt. And then when you increase this to one volt plus 10 millivolt, that is your new Vgs1. Then your VDS1, which is equal to VX1, which is equal to 0 0.766 volt. So then what is the gain? Gain is the change in the output VX minus change in the input voltage. That is a 10 millivolt. That is your gain. So when you do that one, see 0 0.8 minus 0 0.766 divided by 10 millivolt. Yeah, yeah, so it will come, definitely it will be negative because uh, change will come negative. Why the negative is coming? That's my question. You. Because your output is yeah, yeah, yeah. So the gain, so the gain I have shown here is the magnitude 3.4, but actual gain is a minus. Why you get a minus is uh, because when your input voltage is increasing, then your output voltage here it is decreasing because this is equivalent of a common emitter. So here we call it as a common source. In the common source, what is happening is when you increase the voltage here, this voltage will decrease, like in the case of common emitter. So the gain here I have shown is only the magnitude is 3.4, otherwise it is minus 3.4, that is the actual gain.
and then that's the reason if I, if you take like this then you are getting a positive but actually delta vx equal to vx 1 minus vx by 10 millivolt and then you are getting minus uh, 3.4 yeah so the, there is a minus sign and then uh, the minus sign is coming because your signal is inverted in the case of a common emitter for the common source amplifier so that's how we get uh, uh, a negative sign the magnitude is 3.4 so that's the reason we are getting 3.4 so please don't divide 0 0.766 divided by 10 millivolt you know or 1 volt don't do that one so you have to see how much because the question is here what is the change when the region of operation is not known a region is assumed that's what we did with an intelligent guess then the final answer is checked against the assumption so that's what we did here Then most amplifier topology. So most amplifier topologies uh, are common source, common gate, common drain. So these are the most amplifier topologies, which is so common source is equivalent of common emitter in the case of bipolar junction transistor BJT. Common base is equivalent of common gate. Common drain is equivalent of your common collector or emitter follower. So that is a, a com means you are sensing output at the collect at the emitter. So that is the reason common collector is coming. So here you are sensing output at the source. So common source, common gate, common drain. The equivalent the counterparts are common emitter, common base, common collector. Common source is equivalent to common emitter. That is the reason here we got a gain. The, if you take into account the uh, gain, the sign polarity, you get a negative. Because when your voltage is increasing here at the gate, then the drain voltage will decrease because, uh, because of the inversion, which we already studied in the case of BJT. Then, now we are going to look at the biasing. So when you have MOS, then you have to check the biasing. When we studied BJT, we studied the biasing. In MOS also, the most commonly used one is this one, the resistor divider one. But then the MOS, the advantage is uh, when you have this resistor divider, you don't need actually the thevenin equivalent. Why? Because here, yeah, yeah, because current going to the gate anyway, it is approximately almost zero. So you don't have to write down the thevenin equivalent. Another good news. So when you solve the uh, amplifier questions for MOS, you don't have to write down the thevenin. So that is the reason. See, now you like MOS. Because for solving small signal, it is easy. Because R pi equal to infinity, which is literally taking away one branch from your equation. Then, when you solve the amplifier questions, you don't have that uh, thevenin. So, see, the MOS is good. So, now we can write down Vx, which is equal to R2 by R1 plus R2 into Vdd. That is a Vx. So, R2 by R1 plus R2 into Vdd. So, I can also write Vx. What is the Vx value? Which is equal to, if I write Vx equal to Vgs plus Id into Rs. Because if you write Vx, I am going to apply Kirchhoff's law to this branch. So Vx equal to Vgs plus Id into Rs because Id is the current falling through, sorry, current flowing through this Rs. So then that's the reason Vx got two equations. One is uh, R2 by R1 plus R2 into Vdd. Vx also I can write uh, uh, by using this uh, branch Vgs plus Id into Rs. Then I can find out ID from this equation. ID equal to R2 by R1 plus R2 into VDD minus VGS by 1 by RS. Then I know that ID. ID is, we already know the equation. Then I can substitute here ID. So if you substitute ID, this ID here, then R2 by R1 plus R2 into VDD minus VGS into 1 by RS equal to half mu and COX and W by L VGS minus VTS the whole square. Then we can find out, uh, solve this uh, quadratic equation and find out VGS. So that's how we find out VGS. So if you know V1, so what is V1? So V1 is, I have already written, V1 equal to 1 by mu and COX W by L into R. So we take it as a constant so that this equation is not bulky. So that's the reason we substitute this V1. So then this V1, anyway, that's a constant. If you know threshold, and then if you know R1, R2, and VDD, you can find out what is a VGS. So you can precisely find out VGS. Voltage at X is determined by VDD, R1, and R2. VGS can be found using the equation above. ID can be found by using the NMOS current equation. Then another biasing is self-biasing. That also used in the MOS circuit. So when you have self-biasing, I can write 
VDD, which is equal to ID into RD plus I, ID. So here you can see that you got RG, but then I haven't taken into account this RG, the voltage drop. Why? So I have written IDRD. So this is the IDRD plus VGS plus IS into RD, but I haven't written down this one. Why? No, 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 my question I think you haven't understood. So here I am going to write down the Kirchhoff's law. So here you can see, so this is your MOS circuit. Then this is your RS. And then this is a self-biasing circuit. See, this is, you know, both are same. And then my question is, this is RG, and then maybe this is RD, and then this is the VDD. So when I apply Kirchhoff's law for this branch, so this is your ID. So I am going to write VDD, which is equal to ID, RD plus, then I am going to write down this branch, some current may be I1. So I1, RG plus, VGS plus, then this ID will be flowing here. So ID into RS. But then here I have written only in the slide ID, RD plus, VGS plus, ID into RS. I haven't written this one. Why? Yeah, yeah, because this, there is no current flowing through the MOS. So this I1 equal to zero. So that is the reason we don't have this, this term. Then, uh, so you, that's the reason the RG is there, but there is no current is flowing. So it is easy again. Then I can write VGS. VGS equal to, so this VGS. VDD minus IDRD minus IDRS, which is equal to VDD minus, you can take ID common, and then RS plus RD. Then ID, we already know. So you can write uh, ID equal to mu and COX W by L. So VGS minus VTH is the whole square. So VGS we know. So substitute VGS here. Then we get a big equation when you substitute VGS. Again, quadratic equation. And then you can solve this equation. And then you can bias the circuit accordingly. So then you can see that for most, the biasing a bit more you know, complex. Why? Because you got a big equation like half mu and COX, W by L, VGS minus VTH, the whole square. So the circuit above is analyzed by noting M in the saturation and no potential drop uh, appears across RG. Then, then I have a question for you. So these are the biasing, and then using the equation, we, we, we make sure that uh, uh, you got a biasing. So in the, in the case of most using these equations or even using the previous equations, what you are ensuring is uh, you have to make sure that your VGS is greater than VTH. Then how will you make sure that when you have these resistances, your VGS is greater than VTH? That's the reason we need this equation. You know what I meant? When you have these resistances, then it, when you have only one MOS, simply this MOS, it is easy. So then you might ask, you know, what is the purpose of deriving these complex equations? So when you have the, only this MOS, this is gate, this is source, this is drain. It is easy to bias. You put, if you know VTH equal to 0.4 volt, you connect to 0.5 here and then you are fine. But then when you have resistors, when you have other biasing schemes, how will you make sure that your VG is greater than this value? Then we, are, we need some equation that is related to all the R1, R2, everything we are take, we are taking into account. So that is the reason we derive these equations. Then when you know these equations, you can set your VGS you can make, from these values, you can make sure that your VGS is greater than VTH. We can find out the circuit properties. Same with this one. You, by varying this RD, RS, RG, then we can set the equation. We can uh, find out the circuit parameters, like VGS greater than, you can find out VGS greater than VTH. If you want to operate in the saturation region, you can tune by varying these uh, resistances. Uh, your VDS greater than VGS minus VTH. You can do this one. Then the question for you. So for the BJT, IC equal to IS exponential BB by VT. For MOS, so this is for BJT. For MOS, ID equal to, yeah, I got time. IS, no, for MOS, ID equal to 1 by 2 mu and COX, W by L, VGS minus VTH, the whole square. So these are the two equations. For BJT, we got the issue because for some circuit, we don't know VB. Then what we did is we assumed some VB assumption. Then we find out ID, sorry, IC. 
then again we back calculate B, then we check it VB, then we did the iteration. So same applicable to MOS. If you do, if, if you don't know VGS, we will do that because in this equation also you got the problem. Here IC VB. So if you know if you don't know VB, if you don't know IC, then you have to assume. But then here also same thing. If you don't if you don't know VGS, if you don't know ID, you have to assume the VGS then assumption. So assume VB, VGS. Then again you bulk calculate and find out ID, and then again you calculate VGS, and then uh, you have to do the iteration. But then there is a good news for you. Here, iteration can take maybe five times or six times because of this exponential nature. For most, when you do iteration, you may have to do only one or twice because it's a quadratic. So quadratic, when you do the uh, iteration, you get quickly. It will converge quickly. So in summary, if you got an option between BJT and MOS, you will definitely prefer MOS because for MOS everything is easy. Same with the technology. MOS technology is well advanced. That's the reason we are using you know, MOS in a, all the designs. Though these equations are complicated, but MOS is kind of under control. We, we, we can control it. MOS, uh, because your I, IG, the, the gate current equal to zero, that will solve actually many things, make many things uh, simple. So common source stage. So maybe I'll continue in the next lecture regarding the different stages. So we, we studied the biasing, and then I discussed why biasing is required here, same like BJTs. Then these equations are a bit more you know, complex than uh, uh, BJTs. Appears to be complex, but easy to solve it. Even you do iteration, it will converge quickly. Yeah, then, then there is a mid-semester test. We announced it on 2nd uh, May. It seems that there is a clash with another mid-semester test, another subject. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to postpone to next week. So you are going to get one more week. I will announce it on LMS once I get uh, confirmation of the lecture theater booking. So then our mid-semester test will be on not on second, maybe the week after. OK, during a lecture time, so that you don't have any problem. Because actually, some of the students have got uh, some issues clashing with another subject, mid-semester test. That also not the lecture. Maybe any good news, so that all the people can get uh, full marks. And I will be happy. OK, then, thank you.